Today is a very exciting day because after almost a year and a half of doing foundation, we are finally moving on to framing. Uh, that's cool. The sad part about it is that you will see us probably do framing the rest of the season. So uh, we'll try to make it interesting for you. So the first thing we're doing is actually we're going to be installing a B2C in 3000. The 3000 B2C is rated for indoors versus the 4000 that we used in a previous episode for the exterior foundation. Um, so the purpose of the bit thin, and you can see maybe over here the uh, the color change in the foundation concrete is for the bit to thin to prevent moisture to get onto the uh, eye joists. So it'll be easier when you see it. So let's get to work. First lumber delivery ever. Saluda. So it's May twenty seventh, twenty twenty two. Uh, today is a very special day because after four years of owning this uh, property, it's the first time we get to spend the night here. Camping tent. We got another U-Haul today and we brought everything. We got a generator like a year ago, almost, and uh, we hadn't used it at all. Today is the first time we used it. It actually worked great, so we're quite happy. The reason we got it uh, like a year ago was because it was like Amazon Prime Day and it was like 50% off. So we said, oh, we're definitely needing that. And so we just got it and uh, finally we get to use it. So um, yeah, we hope we had used it before, but well, it is what it is. Yeah, we have a lot of that. We do a lot of that stuff. You will see uh, insulation. That's a huge uh, sneak peek into the future. With our lumber in-house, you can actually see my uh, lumber setup back there. And also having uh, installed the uh, bit to thin, it's time to begin framing. So the very first step will be to set up the cantilever at the very front. Um, from the engineering drawings, the requirement is to buy a bigger sill plate and then uh, rip it to size. So let's get to it. So after a few days of hard work, I have finally finished the, uh, the cutting the seal plates. It actually took a little bit longer because I have to account for metal. And also, if you remember, we embedded the uh, J-bolts and threaded rods. And unfortunately, they're not perfectly straight, so I need to account for that diagonal. If I were, if when I cut like a 5 8 hole exactly the size, it just doesn't fit because they come on a, a diagonal and then I have to account for the hypotenuse. So I ended up uh, oversizing the holes a little. Um, for uh, to three quarters and uh, that typically makes it uh, good enough and then I'm able to determine uh, the angle of the rod and then I can cut it a little bit to the side or, or whatnot. Um, it also took a little bit of time because I have accounted for the metal so let me show you what I did there. Okay let's talk some metal. Uh, metal is currently one of my biggest headaches because I haven't been able to figure out who's going to do it. Um, I'm starting to think maybe I should learn how to weld, which is something I don't really want to do. But anyway, I'm kind of getting desperate. We'll see how I solve this problem. So anyway, let's talk about the uh, sole plate. So here you see I have cut some sheeting uh, that represents the plates of metal. Um, this uh, plate you see right here is going to go across the house and hold the uh, carport that you see at the moment. Uh, you also see here we have uh, two string lines that represent the metal holding uh, the first floor of the tiny house. Um, and then if we move forward a little, you'll see this humongous plate. It has actually two posts, one that goes across on the tiny house and, down, and one that goes all the way to the roof and actually holds the uh, trusses at the very top. Well, I, I would say the, uh, the I-beams and uh, LVLs uh, that represent the uh, top of the roof. And um, 
They also interconnect to the main house holding the uh, carport and the roof. And then finally you'll see this other plate that also connects to the uh, main house and holds the uh, carport. So that's why uh, it took me a little bit longer because I had to measure all these things um, as perfect as I could. So uh, let's keep going. So we are about to place our seal plates and I wanted to show you this very cool uh, gasket for the uh, seal plates. It's from Conservation Technology. It's kind of like a rubbery material. Um, its purpose is as pressure comes in, um, it'll uh, compress and adapt to whatever there's on the foundation preventing any air leakages. Uh, the material is uh, pretty much going to stay the same for the rest of the life or at least our life. Uh, so it is pretty cool. Uh, we saw it at the build show. Um, I wish I haven't seen it on YouTube videos, but this is one of the best things we got out of it. Uh, maybe Matt Reisinger has spoken about it. Um, typically, people use uh, this uh, pink foam gasket, and then eventually this just com compacts and then turns into paper. Um, this is very important for us because uh, the weakest points for a house are at the foundation to, um, to framing level, and then at the roof to wall assembly. Uh, for air leakage and uh, if we could as uh, achieve like uh, passive house levels it would be absolutely incredible but we'll give it our best uh, we, we don't care about the uh, certification anyway so I uh, just wanted to show you this pretty cool This is my co-pilot for the day, some L six foot L LBLs, um, that is, uh, it's the safest LBL out there too because I had to put the uh, seat belt so the car wouldn't complain, so fun times, pushing the limits of the construction truck. Alright, so here I am sitting in the cantilever of the tiny house, uh, we're deep into framing. This is the first time ever that uh, we estimated a time to do things and we are moving faster for the first time, which is incredible. Um, so I wanted to show you a few things here first. The first thing I want to show you are the hangers. Um, you might think that they are backwards, that's what I thought the very first time I saw them, but in reality they are not. They are here because they, they help the cantilever from uplift. So the cantilever is standing like this and then air can come in and then lift it. So that's what these guys are there to prevent. Um, another thing I wanted to show you are these like uh, H3 ties. They stand for uh, hurricane ties. Uh, the engineer requested that we have them um, every other beam, but in reality they're like 30 cent 60, 90 cents each. So, and this house is like our kid, uh, we want to give it the best future for our house, so uh, we just put them everywhere, why not, it's 90 cents. Up to now we've been super busy uh, doing framing and I haven't really explained how we install these guys. The reason for these guys are twofold. One is because some of them are beam, actually only one of them. And the other one, they are supports, they, they, are, they act as replacements for the hangers, the Simpson hangers. The reason for that is because here, on, where, where you might see this, except the cantilever, there's metal above, so that makes our life very difficult to install a hanger from the seal plate. 
So that's the reason why we ended up having to go this way. It's it's not an ideal scenario. They're very difficult to install, but they are they are literally beams, not just like eye joists. Um, so the way we installed it is first off, uh, we use our uh, mighty LBL uh, scrap roller. It's very important to use the right one. I don't know if you've seen we've made a mistake, but you will see it if you haven't. Um, and the way we do it is we typically bring it up and we flush the LVL to the seal plate. Uh, we use our level to make sure the post is uh, plumb, and then we mark the holes with a Sharpie or whatever. Um, from there, we drill holes for the uh, Titan HD uh, bolts, and uh, we just install them. Um, so let me explain a little about the Titan HD. Um, these are 5.8 Titan HD uh, bolts, and Simpson absolutely recommends that you must use a 5.8 drill bit, 5.8 bolt, 5.8 drill bit. And the reason for that is because they enter tight and the threads uh, carve their way into it. Let me show you the threads. So as you tighten the bolt into the concrete, the threads kind of make their own path through it, and they are kind of like one-way threads. Uh, it's very difficult to pull them out once they're in, so it's very important to mark these holes correctly. Uh, so let's talk a little about the uh, drilling. Um, I use my mighty uh, drill. Uh, typically the way I do it is I drill like a small pilot hole, and then I go a little bit bigger, and then I go for the big cajona, which is this 5 8 uh, drill. Simpson recommends to drill the hole uh, half an inch deeper, uh, because, and that's because of dust so that it has a place to go. Also, Simpson has a recommendation of either either or um, uh, cleaning the, blowing the dust out or drilling it half an inch deeper, but we just might as well do both. So uh, we also blow the dust out and uh, that's pretty much it, I think. Um, that's how we install these bolts. They're not fun to install. It takes a lot of work and a lot of battery power, so. We don't do it for fun, but they need to be done. So we made our first framing mistake. Can you catch it? So, um, the LVL beam should be flush with the seal plate, and obviously it's not. So how did this happen? Well, we, we want to use a ruler to, for our, all our measurements, but we used something that we thought it was an LVL, and as you can see, it turns out it's not. So we put this one here, and it was perfectly flushed, and we did the whole installation, and it's uh, perfectly wrong. So here is our tip. If you're going to use a ruler, which is actually a pretty good idea, Put some markings. We're going to put this on the other side. I think it's upside down. So we're just going to put the marks so now every time we know that we're using the right one. So here is the thing, we need to fix this. We cannot remove the post for two reasons. One is, this is where it needs to be. We cannot change this location. This is where we have the door for the mechanical room, there's structure coming above. So this needs to be absolutely here. And the second thing is that we already installed the HD, the Titan HD bolts. And once it's going to the concrete, you cannot take them out. So this is to be here. So what we came up with is we took an LVL and we cut this little square to size. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it here. We're going to glue it. We're going to put four nails and then it should be super sturdy. And then we can put our LVL and it's going to be full. I wanted to show you an experiment, uh, something I found in my research for blocking on a uh, joist. I found this for uh, squeaky floors, but they apply for everything. We care about, about a very sturdy floor because we're gonna be putting tile, and that tile is very susceptible to uh, deflection. Um, so this experiment was done by the International Builder Show in association with somebody else, I don't know. I'll, I'll try to put the description in the link and you can see the video yourself. Uh, so effectively what they did is they ran this kind of blocking experiment, like in these forms of floor, joists of floor. Um, they also ran an experiment where they run the cross uh, uh, two by fours, and then they just they run a different one with the uh, joist by itself, and maybe others. 
and it turned out that this was like the strongest of them all this was like a hundred pounds stronger so the experiment they did is they pretty much put a press onto a joist and then they just pretty much pushed until it cracked and uh, this was able i think close to like 500 pounds of pressure or a single point pressure uh, while the other ones they fold at the uh, 300 pound level so anyway don't don't take my word for it just watch the video uh, and i'll put it in the description below just stroke it began to rain and we said like oh we need to protect all our tools and we were very sure of putting them under the stable to make sure no rain would fall in on top of the tools and little did we know that we have a flood area right here so our uh, generator was like borderline you can see our nails you can see the level from those buckets our uh, beloved air compressor was uh, submerged in water um, so we did a good job at protecting the top, but we didn't account for the water below. So all our tool bags, they are also wet. You can see for instance, my gloves, they are perfectly dry because they were on top. But then if you take, oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> if you take a closer look, um, into <laughs> Hector is mean, but if you take a closer look here, just look at this. And that's just one of the bags. Our power tools, it's the same thing you can see here. So um, we're hoping that everything is going to be sort of okay. We're going to drain all the water out. Uh, we're not going to use them for a while, take batteries off and whatnot. But uh, that's what we're dealing with today. 